I got an email recently and the question was, what causes vacuum tube red plating? So I thought I'd make a short video here today to cover that topic. All right, before we get into what causes them to red plate, let's make sure we can identify what a red plating tube looks like. So out of these pictures, which tubes would you think are red plating at this point in time? Hmm. Well, let's see here. If you guessed these tubes right here, you would be correct. So the one on the right here, you can see the plates of the tubes here glowing bright red. This one over here, the plates are nice and gray. Um, this one, you can see these uh, tubes look normal, and this one looks like a uh, lit up like a Christmas tree. This one here, just starting to show a little bit of orange in it over here. Uh, both of these, while they have orange glow going on on both the tops and bottoms of those, those are actually the filaments, or sometimes called heaters, in the tubes that are, that are there designed to heat up the cathodes, and that's a normal function of the tube. So that is not red plating. What we're talking about is when the gray plates here on the tubes, and sometimes they're black, um, actually heat up and overheat and start glowing red. As you can see here, all four of these tubes are glowing red. These are over, overheating and red plating. Now this is a little different scenario. These here are um, gas rectifiers and they are designed to glow brightly like this. So this is an OB2 tube. It is not red plating. That's the way it's designed to operate. And this is an OD3 which has a purplish haze glow. It is not red plating. Okay, before you can really understand what is causing red plating, you, you need to understand how a vacuum tube works. So I'm going to do just a teeny little 101 section on that here. So typically you have the B plus of your power supply and your amplifier that is uh, applied to the plate of the tube. And this stands for volt, voltage at the anode. And um, anode and plate are the same thing. They get called um, plate sometimes and anode sometimes, but they, it's an interchangeable word. And so what happens is you apply this high voltage up here, typically two, three, four, or 500 volts. And this voltage finds its way through the tube down to ground. And that current that finds its way down through here, what we'll call this RA, in other words, the, the load resistor of the anode or plate, plate load resistor, down through to the cathode of the tube here, then through the cathode, load, cathode resistor here down to ground. And that current that flows from this uh, high voltage supply down to ground here, we call the plate current, and we denote that as IP, uh, current plate. And so ultimately what causes red plating is um, when this current flowing through the tube exceeds the design, the manufacturer's design specifications for this tube. So I'll just make an example. This tube may be designed by the manufacturer to handle 40 milliamps of current flowing through it, okay? But for whatever reason, you have your, uh, your tube environment out of whack, and it's not letting 40 milliamps through it. It's letting 60 milliamps through it. What will happen is your plate here will start to glow red or orange um, because it is um, handling an excessive amount of electrons. And we're going to talk about that here just in a second. Just a little more on how vacuum tubes work. Um, typically what you will do is you will send a small signal in here, like you can see here, a sine wave, into the grid of the tube, which ultimately the grid acts like a valve to turn on and off the amount of current flowing through this tube. And as you, imagine, as you vary the amount of current flowing through this tube, ultimately what you're doing is you're varying the voltage across this tube at a much higher um, amplitude than the little signal coming into it here. And what you end up with is amplification. The signal then being measured across the tube here on the output um, is much larger than what you're putting into it. Okay. Now I'm going to confuse the heck out of you, maybe, um, or maybe not. Maybe you're convinced, maybe you're familiar with what's the difference between what is conventional current flow versus electron current flow. If you go through an electrical engineering program of any type, uh, they will talk a lot about this. And today, conventional current flow is actually the opposite of electron flow. So let me let me point that out for you. The way this works, 
Remember a minute ago, I told you that we heat up the filament, uh, which typically sits about right here where my cursor is at right now. It's just not drawn on this picture. And it gets very hot, and it causes the cathode here to get extremely hot. And the cathode is typically either made of or coated of a material that starts to boil off electrons. And these electrons accelerate in this direction and hit the plate, okay? Um, so that would be considered electron flow, which is the opposite of the way we kind of look at electricity these days, which is current flow. So if you can kind of follow that along, you, you'll be in good shape because you can start to understand here from a physical standpoint, you see here these two little wires here go up in here into this little twisted section. That is the filament. So you're heating this thing up extremely hot just by applying an AC or DC voltage across these two pins. No different than the uh, filament inside of a light bulb, how it gets very hot and glows. Um, this then hot filament is heating up this sleeve that's over top of it, which is the cathode. And there again, it's either coated or made of a material that then starts to boil off electrons and they accelerate and they fly out and they hit the plate of the tube here. Now this diagram doesn't show the grid in between that where you can vary that current flow, uh, but just know it's typically there. And so as these electrons boil and fly from the cathode to the plate, if there are too many of those hitting the plate at too fast of a rate, the plate will start to glow red. And so that's ultimately the scenario we're talking about here. So let's take a look here. This is the uh, tube data sheet for a 6BQ5 or 8BQ5 tube, otherwise very commonly known as the EL84 tube, okay? And if you start to look at some of the specifications called out around this tube, okay? First it off, it'll tell you that the maximum voltage you can put on the plate of the tube is about 300 volts, okay? And then you'll kind of come down here and you can start to look at some characteristics and typical operation. And let's just say we were operating this as a single-ended amplifier um, where you had a single tube per channel. And it would tell you here that typically the way you see that operate is you put about 250 volts on the plate of the tube, right? Um, typically here it would tell you then that your, that your zero signal plate current, in other words, at idle, is typically around 48 millivolts, okay? And your maximum signal, so, my, so as hard as you can drive this tube, at, even in the, in the top end configuration here, is around 50 milliamps. So if you happen to end up with 60 milliamps flowing through this tube for whatever reason, guess what? It's going to red plate. All right, so let's finally get to the causes here of red plating. A typical schematic for a uh, amplifier, this is a 6BQ5, just like we showed you. This is being driven by 12AU7. The way it works here, signal kind of flows in through the input jack, goes here into the 12AU7, gets amplified, comes out of the 12AU7, comes through this coupling cap over here, into a grid stuff resistor, ultimately feeds into the grid of this tube. Um, this tube then, the, you're varying the current here um, by the amount being sent here on the input that's been amplified. And ultimately that varying current here then causes a varying voltage here, which goes across the output transformer and drives your speaker. Okay, so 48 milliamps is, we talked about that a minute ago, is about what we should be looking for with 250 volts sitting up here on the plate of this tube, right? Similarly, this 12AU7 probably has about 220 volts up here. It drops a little bit across this uh, load resistor, but you end up with about 210 volts here on the plate of this tube. And over here, what you actually have is, if you'll go back to the specs we had just a second ago, one of the items we need to look at is the grid voltage, okay? And it says it needs to be about 7.3 volts negative. Okay, so you can see here on the grid here, number pin number two of this tube, it needs to be about minus 7.3 volts. The way we get that in a lot of tubes, this is a, a um, what we call auto bias um, tube or a cathode bias tube. 
um, which is kind of contrary to a fixed bias tube, and I'm not going to get into that today. But the way this tube gets biased is basically the grid comes here and it's tied to ground through this 330k ohm resistor. So for all intents and purposes, the grid is somewhat um, sitting at ground. And then what happens is this, because of the current flowing through here that builds up across this 320 ohm resistor, um, there's a voltage sitting right here of about 7.3 volts. So if you measure the volt, the the um, voltage between the cathode and the grid um, with respect to each other, the grid is minus 7.3 volts compared to the cathode. And that's how you determine the uh, the grid voltage here. Okay, so that's how this tube should operate. So let's go through then the causes of red plating here. Okay, sorry, we're 10 minutes in, but I had to get some basics out of the way. First and foremost, the thing that causes your tubes to red plate is your bias is out of spec. Okay, either you have an incorrect um, cathode resistor value or possibly your anode um, resistor value could be out of whack. Now keep in mind, if you come back over here and look at this picture, there isn't an a, um, anode resistor here like you saw in this picture here. Well, what is the anode resistor here is actually um, the primary winding of your output transformer. So a couple things could be going on to cause this RA to be out of whack. One, you could have the wrong output transformer in here with the wrong plate load. Two, you could have some shorted windings here in the primary of your output transformer. Or three, possibly you could have the wrong load on the other side here that is reflecting back and causing a different impedance here on the primary, causing a different load here to your output tube. That's a less likely scenario. A more likely scenario might be that you've got the wrong output transformer in place or that you have um, some shorted windings in this. Or like I mentioned, you've just got the wrong value here in your cathode resistor. Okay. Another scenario that can cause this is not all tubes are auto biased the way I showed here. Some tubes will actually have a voltage supply, a negative voltage supply that is designed to put the right voltage here on the grid. Okay, And if for whatever reason um, that negative voltage that's on the grid here is not set properly, your tube will allow much more current to flow through it and thus red plate. Um, sometimes there would be a potentiometer that you would adjust to adjust that negative uh, voltage supply. And if that potentiometer is not set right, then your tube would over red plate. You see that a lot in amplifiers. You'll see a bias adjustment pot. And that's what you would be adjusting here would be this negative voltage that ultimately, if not set right, lets too much current flow through this tube. So item number three here, if for whatever reason, um, you know, you haven't adjusted your bias and it got out of whack, or maybe you haven't changed out values in your device, um, one of the most likely causes of tube red plating um, comes as your gear just ages and components start to break down. And what we're talking about are leaky coupling capacitors, which ultimately allow DC from a previous stage onto your tube's grids, changing the bias. So let's look at that, okay? All right, here, we've got 210 volts sitting right here. And the purpose of this coupling cap is to allow the AC signal that's been amplified by this 12AU7 to flow over onto the grid of this tube and get amplified yet again. What you do not want is 210 volts of this tube moving across this wire and getting onto the grid of your next tube. Thus, we put a capacitor. Remember, capacitors allow AC to flow through them, but they block DC. Well, if this capacitor here is starting to break down and it's leaking, what you may find is 210 volts on this side, but maybe it's leaking and letting 40 volts through to the other side. Well, guess what happens over here? if you've got minus 7.3 volts and you add 40 volts to it, right? You're no longer at minus 7.3 volts. You're actually at a positive voltage at that point in time, um, which will cause very strange behaviors for this tube over here 
ultimately can cause red plating on the tube itself, especially if in a fixed bias where there's a negative supply here, things get really out of whack. So if your coupling capacitors happen to be the old wax type, um, you know, paper type that are just breaking down over time, um, very likely maybe what's causing your red plating. Okay, a few other causes of red plating much less common. First, possibly could be overdriven by a previous tube significantly. It's not very common you see that. Uh, I see that more in RF amplifier scenarios. Um, number two, the tube could be oscillating. And when I mean oscillating, um, some amplifier tubes are designed to cover a very wide frequency range. In other words, they'll amplify all the way up into the RF range, maybe, maybe as high as your AM or FM um, um, frequency spectrum. And um, this tube may be getting, maybe oscillating at a very high frequency that you can't even hear. Um, so sometimes, depending on the circuit design, that could be the scenario, but, but not, not so much with your typical amplifier that you might buy. Uh, that might be more the case if you built one on your own and didn't do the right things to kind of suppress that. Um, and then the last item on the list, extremely rare, extremely rare, is the actual tube is bad itself. So a lot of people will kind of see a tube glowing and they'll say, oh gosh, I got a bad tube. They'll pull it out, they'll put another one in and it glows as well. Um, one thing you can do you can move your tubes around, so swap swap maybe the left tube with the right tube and see if it follows the tube. If it follows the tube, it may be a bad tube. It's possible, but it's a very, very seldom scenario when it is the tube. All right, so you say to me, Mark, I changed my tube and it solved my problem. I'm not sure I believe your video. I might say back to you, well, you may have changed your tube and temporarily solved it, but there might still likely be an underlying issue in your amp, okay? Um, what, what may have happened here is, let's say you swapped the tube out. Well, maybe the tube you swapped it out with is, for whatever reason, capable of handling a few more milliamps of current than the one that was in the amplifier. Maybe you swapped out a GE with an RCA tube or whatever. Or maybe you swapped out a GE tube with a GE tube that was made eight years earlier. And maybe the, at that point in time, the, uh, the specs were handling just a little more current. And the, over time, they had value engineered these tubes and made them a little cheaper. And the newer ones don't handle quite as much current so well. You know, just a different batch of tubes. So don't always assume just because a tube solved your problem that your amp is good. Uh, you might still want to look at the underlying things like do you have leaking coupling caps and is your amp biased properly. If you need help getting your amp biased properly, find a uh, tech that knows what they're doing and get that done. I uh, just kind of wanted to point out the causes to you today. Hope you learned a little something. I had fun with this and uh, we'll see you next time.